as a young citizen of India, armed with technology, knowledge and love for my nation, with a vision of transforming India into a developed nation, I am joining Shobhith University. What about you? Very good morning to all the participants from India and abroad. So with the Institute of Engineering and Technology, Meerut, deemed to be university and its centers of excellence, Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies, and Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, <clears throat> extend greetings to all the participants from India and abroad who are attending today's national webinar series on doubling farmers' income by 2022, Atmanirvar Bharat in agriculture. <clears throat> Sorry. This webinar series is being hosted on every Thursday at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Today is 16th December 2021. This webinar is on the topic, very important topic, technology, education, research, and rehabilitation for the environment. Four tools, very important tools, technology, education, research, and rehabilitation for the environment. On behalf of the Honorable Chancellor, Honorable Vice Chancellor, the faculty members of the university, and on my behalf, and as Professor Emeritus and Chairman of the Centers of Excellence, Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies, Center for Agribusiness Disaster Management Studies, Center for Informatics Development Solutions and Applications, Center for Industry 4.0 Technology Studies and Applications, and Center for Health Informatics and Computing. Let me welcome the today's guest speaker to deliver the talk in the 56th edition of the national webinar series, Dr. Rajendra Madhav Rao Shente. Namaste. Chairman, Terre Policy Center, former director, United Nations Environment Program. For the benefits of the participants and the guest speaker, so far under this webinar series, the university has organized 55 webinars on the topics, namely, role of agricultural cooperative societies and e-governance, blockchain technology-based fishery value chain, a self-contained village felt need of the day, Spices Informatics Network Value Chain, Lantana Camera, a camouflaged treasure trout, Smart Hill Agriculture, Digitalized Hill Agriculture Value System, Mara Mobile, Mara Marketing, Integrated Mariculture, Aquaponics, and Precision Agriculture, in short, MAPA Biofarms for Income Revolution. Smart Tribal Agriculture, Optimizing Value Chain, Digital Agri-Tech in Industry Perspective, Land Resources Information System in India, Present and Road Ahead, Weather Decision Technologies for Increasing Farm Income, Big Data in Smart Farming, Sustainable Soil and Land Management for Climate Smart Agriculture, Understanding Market Dynamics for Increasing Farm Income, Role of technologies in mitigating crop risk. How to generate additional profit via simple, attractive approaches in farm produce. Adoption of flexi rubber check dam technology. Potential benefit for farmers in rainfed and coastal agro ecosystems. Realizing the economic benefits of agroforestry. After all, organic humic solutions for increasing crop yields and quality while increasing farm income and improving soil health, closing the nutrient loop, phosphorus management in protein farming, improving nutrient use efficiency and farm productivity. Artificial intelligence enabled pest management technology for agriculture crop protection without pesticides, empowering farmers through extension and knowledge dissemination, role of mass media, smart poultry monitoring solutions, Agrobiodiversity, intellectual property laws, agriculture and farmers' welfare, and insight into the issues for India's agrarian economy. Manufacture and application of biochar for increased soil fertility and crop productivity. Sustainable integration of livestock 
with and uh, with agriculture for income increase role of geographical indications on improving farmers income lessons from asia pacific region dairy informatics network value chain a dairy tech startups perspective for farmers income increase spices informatics network value chain a turmeric startup perspective for farmers income increase generating sustainable on farm income through fintech interventions nutrition sensitive agriculture pathway for increasing farmers income artificial intelligence and data analytics to ensure optimal nutrition in the soil harvested food that minimizes human disease <clears throat> bioenergy supply chain a business opportunity for rural enterprises and farmer producer organizations tech enabling india tech star of the farmers for <clears throat> manifold increase in productivity and income open insurance ecosystem for agriculture producers risk management solutions to overcome repercussions on farmers income market stability and food safety role of mass media for farmers income increase a case study from green tv agriculture stack at stack open source digital infrastructure for the agriculture ecosystem a linux foundation project circular bioeconomy towards resilience urgent need for redefining raw materials and modified waste management policies and regulations agri tech new horizon in indian agriculture supporting of farmers for marketing will only help doubling of income by 2022 rural transformation for tra farmers income increase case studies from impoverished districts in maharashtra mobile enabled service mobile enabled software as a service to solve complex supply chain challenges a case study from daily orders <clears throat> john deere's journey in india integrated precision agriculture solutions doubling the income of farmers through eco agri revolution bears carbon farming initiative post production intervention maximizing value for farmers beef models of revival of traditional water management systems to enable doubling of farmers income should be adopt farmers welfare as a new paradigm instead of farmers income ict intervention in agriculture challenges and opportunities democratizing the future of farming a global experience commercial processing of orders the next game changer in dairy data driven agriculture and agri tech startup perspective agri business potentials in moringa wonder tree and miracle tree agriculture income pathway strengthening links between agricultural activities and nutrition outcome today is the 56th edition of this national webinar series which will be addressed by dr rajendra madhavra shetty chairman chare policy center pune maharashtra and former director unep on the very important topic technology education research and rehabilitation for the environment dear participants you please note the key words technology <coughs> education research rehabilitation and environment agriculture sector is the foundation of indian economy acharya vinoba babai said india is largely an agrarian agricultural country krishi pradhan desh and a country of villages more than 6.25 lakhs villages gram pradhan desh it employs more than 50% of the indian workforce india's workforce and contributes almost 17 to 18% of its gdp but agriculture is the main source of food employment and income for 70 to 80% of the people suffering from hunger in developing countries at present agricultural livelihoods are being severely impacted world over as a result of anthropogenic global warming and climate change india's labor intensive and subsistence based agriculture sector is particularly vulnerable to this development climate change has both the direct and indirect effects on agricultural productivity including changing rainfall patterns severe drought flooding and changes in the geographical redistribution of pests and diseases 
Indian farming community comprises of about 14.5 crores of operational holders, of which 18, 85% operational holders are of small and marginal size operational holdings. Farmer needs timely, location specific, and personalized information for effective control on their production, risk, and then market their produce to identify the market opportunities. Therefore, an investment in creating a robust post-harvest storage and transportation by investing rupees 89,375 crore would create about 3 million jobs according to a published report and majority of which will be at village level, post-harvest and storage management at village level, thus empowering the local and rural economy published this is an article published in on in on 15th july 5th july 2018 in the website www.downtoearth.org.in many national level programs like digital india 2015 make in india 2015 skill india 2015 startup india 2015 and stand up india 2015 have faced operational difficulties for the for its impact at farm level and farmer level that to at the small and marginal farmers future smart farmers the urgency of democratizing foresight future is an area of increasing uncertainty though the future cannot be predicted it can be explored exploring the future helps making better decision in the present time it opens new paths unveils new options and enlarges our understanding of potential unexpected effects of our decisions at a time when climate smart agriculture is taking momentum in the international community urgency of more future smart farmer organization and local communities become imperious the voice and the views of future smart farmer organizations and local communities are needed to influence the a national and international agendas. I would like to quote the Honorable Prime Minister's Inter Independence Day address on 15th August 2021. He said, I quote, in the coming years, we will have to increase the collective power of the small farmers of the country. We have to give them new facilities. They must become the country's pride. Chota Kisan, Bane, Desh Ke Shan. Small farmers become the pride of the nation. The Government of India, through its National Informatics Centre, has prepared IT blueprint for agriculture sector through its through a national conference on informatics for sustainable agriculture development in May 1995. I was the instrumental in organizing this national conference at Vigyan Pavan, wherein more than 450 participants participated at, uh, you know, at Vigyan Bhavan in New Delhi. And the Smart Village Scheme 2002-2007. I was instrumental once again to visualize this program and got it approved by the planning commission and and the government of india has also launched a national e-governance program in agriculture in 2005 volume 3 volume 4 volume 11 and volume 12b of the doubling farmers income by 2022 report 2018 of the government of india have suggested reforms measures for income rise through digitalization of farm sector I was closely associated with the three, two volumes, volume 11 and volume 12B. Volume 11 is empowering the farmers through extension and knowledge dissemination and volume 12B, digital technology in agriculture. I was associated as a group leader of these two volume. Agriculture logistic is the backbone of agribusiness and agriculture marketing is the brain behind value realization. The digitalization of in agriculture, you know, <clears throat> you know, and the volume twelve B has suggested strategic use of digital technology in farming system life cycle through seven mission mode project for the benefits of the participants and the guest speaker. Let me recall the seven mission mode programs: digitalized agriculture, digital technology and innovation in agriculture, digital India, make in India. Skill India and Startup India programs for transformational 
reforms in agriculture sector through smart rainfed farms farming smart irrigated farming and smart tribal farming digitalized agro meta advisories and agricultural risk management solution at farm level digitalized agricultural resources information system and micro level planning for achieving smart village and smart farming digitalized value chain for about 400 agricultural commodities and also for livestock and fisheries commodities digitalized access to inputs technology knowledge skill agricultural finance credit marketing and agribusiness management to the farmers digitalized integrated land and water management system per drop more crop and last one is very important digitalized farm health management for reduction of farmers loss which means integrated health management system of farmers health that is that public health plant health animal health soil health water health and environment health and you know that 80 percent of the disease which we get come from animal covid 19 pandemic caused by such animal disease i have been voicing and working on health informatics network value chain incorporating this six components very effectively at village level health informatics network value chain india will be the first country first nation to visual you know to get on to this health informatics network value chain through the Soviet Institute of Engineering and the Technology deemed to be University Meerut. That's why we have set up a center of excellence, center for health informatics and computing to visualize these six components. The three farm acts 2020 were a game changer, but it has been repealed by the parliament, by the government due to various other reasons. Atma Nirbar Bharat, the road ahead. It is the vision of our honorable prime minister of making India a self-reliant nation, rested on five eyes, intent, inclusion, investment, infrastructure, and innovation based on five pillars, economy, quantum jump, not incremental, infrastructure, one that represents modern India, system, 21st century technology driven, and the demand whereby the strength of our demand and supply chain should be utilized to full capacity. This was announced on 15th May, 2020, vocal for local, and making India for global. Atma Nirbar Bharat in agriculture, during the third trench of Atma Nirbar Bharat Abhiyan, the government of India has announced and, <coughs> and provided 1.5 lakh crore as a booster for agriculture sector, democratizing the future of farming, achieving sustainable development goal two, zero hunger. In a situation of rapid global population growth requires a continued focus on food production, continued focus on food production. Farming not merely needs to sustainably produce nutritious diets, but should also provide livelihood for farmers while retaining natural ecosystems and services. Sustainable development goals. In September 2015, world leaders adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and it's the 17 goals that cut across disciplines, sectors, and institutional mandates, acknowledging the integrated nature of, of the many challenges that the human, humanity faces, from gender inequality to inadequate infrastructure, from youth unemployment to environmental degradation. All the countries and stakeholders, including UNEP, are working in collaboration to implement 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development the 17 Sustainable Development Goals and 169 targets and 241 indicators are there to measure the progress toward achieving this agenda. UNEP, United Nations Environment Program, is the custodian agency of 25 of the SDG indicators. <coughs> across the, the, the 25 SDG indicators, across Sustainable Development Goal 6, 8, 12, 14, 15, and 17. The indic indicators cover topics related to resource management and protection of protection of water, marine and terrestrial ecosystem, circular economy, including the sustainable management and efficient use of natural resources and environmentally sound management of chemicals and waste. Terrain, technology, education, research, and rehabilitation for the environment. According 
the website of the Terre Policy Center. It is given. Terre in French means the earth. The earth is our only home in this vast universe. That itself is a strong enough reason that we should take care of it. It's a very good, you know, statement which every citizen of India should understand. And also tells that the four tools, namely technology, education, research and rehabilitation, make up our environmental kit to undertake the work always respecting the value of our ecosystems. With the help of this toolbox, the Terre tried to reach all strata of society, particularly the younger generation of and the people at the bottom of primate is more important at the village level. And according to the and according to the website of the Terre Policy Center, their mission is to provide credible information, straight answers, and innovative solutions in the in the effort to address global environmental issues like climate change, adoption and mitigation ozone layer protection, toxic chemicals, and biodiversity welfare. And also, it says, our unsustainable lifestyle are impacting our global climate. Environmental protection and human development are at the core of the debate on contemporary social and economic order. I would like to inform the audience and also our honorable speaker, Dr. Rajendra Chente, that as a Secretary General of Poo Vegan Vigas Foundation, I was instrumental in organizing three international conferences titled Earth Day Celebrations and Sustainable Development and Sustainable Lifestyle way back in April 2001. And second international conference, Sustainable Agriculture, Water Resources Development and Earth Care Policies in December 2002, and rural India achieving Millennium Development Goals and grassroots development in 2005. Based on these conferences, Bhu Vigyan Vikas Foundation has brought out a lot of publications for Earth Studies. This I was when uh, when I was in service as a Deputy Director General National Informatics Center. I was associated with Professor K V Sundaram. He is no more now. He is the Emeritus Chairman of the Founder and Emeritus Chairman of the <coughs> yeah, Bhuvik and Vikas Foundation. And we formed this NGO and this was done in 2001 onwards. My theme paper titled Rural India, Different Meaning to Different People, presented in the third international conference of the Bhuvik and Vikas Foundation at Hyderabad has its relevance till today. Rural India, different meaning to different people. Appropriate rural management in India can add up to 1.33 trillion US dollars to India's GDP today. You know, if we have an appropriate rural management in India, can add up to 1.33 trillion US dollars to India's GDP. So, according to the website of Tarai, they talked about. They define and explain their components such as technology, why and how and where it will be utilized. Education component, research component. In the research component, they say their primary activity is research on good practices, governance, good, good practice governance and policies. This is the important at the grassroots level. That's why the Soviet Institute of Engineering Technology, a private university, deemed to be university, located in western part of India, has set up, western part of Uttar Pradesh, has set up five centers of excellence to looking into the rural India's problems and rehabilitation for the environment. And I also would like to quote our Honorable Prime Minister during his speech while addressing the <coughs> COP26 World Leaders Summit on 2nd November 2021, he said that India's contribution to emission has only been 5%, even though country constituted 17% of the global population. He further said that there is a global consensus about India being the only major economy that has delivered on Paris agreements in letter and spirit. He also announced Panch Amar, Panch, Panch Amar 
which are fulfillment of 50% of energy requirement through renewable energy, usage of non-fossil energy capacity to 500 kilo, you know, gigawatts by 2030, bridging down of carbon intensity by 45% by 2030, reduction of net projected carbon emission by a billion of by a billion tons and achieve net zero emission by 2070. On the occasion, Honorable Prime Minister of India also said, asked the world leaders to take forward LIFE. He also explained the acronym LIFE, Lifestyle for Environment, Sustainable Lifestyle, Sustainable Development. India has been, you know, traditional for sustainable development and sustainable lifestyle. That's why in our first conference, we put International Conference on Sustainable Development and Sustainable Lifestyles. And nature protects if she is protected. I took this, you know, statement from the website of Tarai. The nature protects if she is protected. You know, this is, I've taken it from the, the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. The need for protection and conservation of environment and sustainable use of natural resource is reflected in the constitutional framework of India and also in the international commitments of India. Some of the important legislation for environment protection are as follows. National Green Tribunal Act 2010, the Air Prevention and Control of, Pol control of Pollution Act 1981, Water Prevention and Control, control of Pollution Act 1974, Environment Protection Act 1986, and the hazardous waste management regulation, etc. Terre Policy Center Smart Campus Cloud Network, SCCN. We will hear a lot from the address during the address of our guest speaker, Dr. Rajendra, you know, uh, Shante. Universities are the centers where youth are bubbling with ideas for a change, change towards the better future. And Smart Campus Cloud Network is a global network of the education campuses of schools, colleges, institutes, and universities committed to make a tangible contribution to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. With this, let us now turn to the address of Dr. Rajendra Madhavarav Shanti, Chairman, Terai Policy Center, former Director, UNEP, and coordinating lead author of IPCC 2007 that won Nobel Peace Prize. Chairman of International Advisory Board of Operation Earth China, Government of India's representative on UN Assessment Panel, Pune, State of Maharashtra, India, and the very important topic. Dr. Rajendra Shente is, is an alumnus of Indian Institute of Technology, IIT, and former director, of, director in United Nations Environment Program, currently serving as the chairman of Terai Policy Center, which is a non, not-for-profit organization engaged in the evidence-based policy development and project-based advocacy on the sustainable development. Before August 2011, he was the head of the Ozone Action Branch of the United Nations Environment Program, Division of the Technology Industry and Economics in Paris. Dr. Rajendra Shente served as a review editor for the IPCC Special Report and technology transfer in 2000 and was also a coordinating lead author for the IPCC team special report on safeguarding the ocean ozone layer and climate uh, global climate system in 2005. This work of IPCC including the contribution of many scientists was recognized by the joint award of the 2007 Nobel Peace Prize. Dr. Rajendra Shente's UNEP program became the first in the United Nations to back and to back an award from the United States Environmental Protection Agency, Protection Agency for global efforts to protect the ozone, ozone layer. He also won a United States EPA Award for Climate Protection. In 2006, Dr. Rajendra Shande was facilitated, to, was felicitated by the former president of India, Dr. Abdul Kalam, for his role in development of solar vaccine cooler for the poor, rural, and remote communities. Dr. Rajendra Shente is a member of steering committee of the UN uh, of key UN EP reports on interlinkage between ozone layer protection and climate change. He has adopted his village, Rahim, Rahimatpur, 
to develop it into a role model and a social laboratory for the sustainable development. And according to the guest speaker, it would be a great opportunity not only to interact with the faculty and students, but there, but also find the convergence of work between the center of excellence of Soviet University and Tare. Today's topic will motivate and galvanize the participants watching over telecast through facebook.com public Soviet University India, <laughs> youtube.com public Soviet University in, or LinkedIn slash company slash Soviet dash university for establishing agri tech startups more than 6,500 agri tech startups, one per block, or even about 2.25 lakh agri tech startups, one per each gram panchayat, strengthening intra links of various components of technology education in you know education and you know re research and rehabilitation and for environment for the environment technology education research rehabilitation for the environment careers in the agriculture food and natu natural resources cluster involve improving the quality and safety of food cultivating and preserving our natural resources and caring for animal Career pathway is divided into seven pathways, agribusiness systems, animal systems, environmental service systems, food products and processing systems, natural resource systems, plant systems, and power structural technical systems. TARE provides the support base for this. Let me invite our guest speaker to address the participants and, and I welcome our guest speaker today to the national webinar series on doubling farmers income by 2022 atmanir bharat in agriculture to talk on the topic technology education research and rehabilitation for the environment thank you very much and over to dr rajendra shanti our guest speaker over to you sir thank you very much professor moni uh, I'm extremely delighted for a very generous introduction to the subject, as well as introduction of myself. Uh, I'm also thankful to uh, Honorable Chancellor Kumar Shekhar Vijendra, uh, and also your team for organizing this event, 56th event in a webinar series of extremely important subject of doubling farmers income. And the way you read out these topics, I was extremely surprised. Because normally webinars during COVID-19 are on all modern technologies, online session, courses, hackathon. In many of them, I myself took part. It was the first time something has been happening. About 50% of the population of India, and that subject is called as agriculture and we are talking about doubling the income of agriculture when we see that sunsex index is rising mainly because of the industrial production and when we see the indian growth or nation's growth all over the world is based on mainly on manufacturing and services here professor moni and shobit university is talking about the agriculture which feeds us almost every day, but we forget the problems there. And hence, I'm really honored to have been invited by the Shobit University to talk on this subject. And I must thank my friend, Ashok Methil, who has connected me so well with the Shobit University and uh, allowed me to express my views. And this is how I start with. Many must be wondering that with all this background setup, which I have, which you are seeing on a screen, what this man is going to talk about agriculture and technology and research and rehabilitation. Let me tell you one thing. I belong to a village, one of the seven lakh villages that India has, and that is Rehmatpur. Many people think that I am an IIT graduate. I worked in the United Nations. I was a great uh, coordinating lead author of IPCC that won Nobel Peace Prize. But I always say to the people, don't forget to mention 
that I am from the village. And thank you, Professor Moni, for mentioning that. This village is in a Satara district, not far from the Western Ghats of India, which is a hot spot for the environment. And I've, I've grown over there to see how that Western Ghats had changed to the hot spot. Frankly speaking, the whole agricultural sector in India is a hot spot. IUCN, which normally recognizes the hotspots in this world, should in fact include the agriculture, the arable agriculture in India as a hotspot. Because our ground level is going down. The nitrous oxide and various greenhouse gases are increasing from the industries. The land degradation is widespread and our agricultural GDP of 3.5 is remaining constant for last 20 years. Of course, we are producing enough, but there is a lack of diversity. We are mainly with the rice, sorghum and wheat, but the diversity is decreasing and we are focusing on only few crops and that also is exaggerated by the climate change. So let me start with the presentation, of course, on technology, education, research and rehabilitation for environment, but all focusing on agricultural sector and the communities which are working on agriculture. Those are the labor forces as well as the land owners. Let me tell you, after my career in United Nations Environment Program in Paris, I'm settled in a very dry land near Pune, and I have a two acres of land where I do the farming. I'm not justifying that why I am a speaker on agriculture, but I'm saying that I'm experiencing the sufferings of farmers who have India's average land holding is about two acres. And that's what exactly I have. And I'm doing my experiments on agroforestry, organic farming, and all sorts of varieties of vegetables. I'm doing this to see how the farmers in India live. And I feel that that is a good enough introduction for me to tell you what makes me speak about doubling the farmer's income. This is my first slide. And you, will, you will be wondering why I have given this funny name of few innovations, three in one, food, energy, and water. And that is few. In whole of the introduction of Professor Moni, what I liked most was his word innovation. Today we are talking about MSP. We are talking about a food subsidy, fertilizer subsidy, doubling the farmer's income by direct transfer into the account of farmers. We are talking about stopping the land degradation, etc., etc. But we hardly talk about innovations in agriculture sector. And the innovation is not about just having irrigation, not just about soil health card. But the basic innovation where our productivity can go up, our animal husbandry becomes more efficient, and all associated agricultural linkages become more effective and enjoyable to the farmers. I think our incomes will go up provided our farmer is healthy and he, create, he protects his well-being. So I call it agri hydro -voltaics. Again, a funny name. I'm talking about water. Voltaic is through natural energy and how the agriculture can benefit through the innovations on using the water and the energy, which are going to be scarce tomorrow. Next slide, please. So we are in this today's uh, world. The left-hand photograph talks about about 10 years back, how it looked like and how it looks like now. 
we have the saying that man is known by the company he keeps for me the man is known by the toys he keeps look at on the right hand side the girl is going around with a dolls next slide please and here the toys are using masks and that's how our situation is today our toys are also becoming full of masks and the future is masked next slide please and we are learning to live with a foggy future with a masked energy next slide please people say that one of the successes of united nation is we have avoided the world war 3 being from united nations where i worked for two decades at the global program and a leader i would say that that is wrong united nation has not succeeded in avoiding world war 3 it is we are in a world war 3 we are fighting a war between humanity and the nature next slide please biodiversity never in the history of humanity the rate of extinction of species has been so high at the end of this present century 1 million species the humanity will never see they are gone they are gone forever and the restoration is impossible next slide please yes food production is increasing but there is a less and less diversity in it we are having a monoculture and that is mainly because of various factors we will come to that later on but one of the factor is severe land degradation next slide please humanity actions are causing a degradation of environment because the way we are develop defining our development is leading us to the damage of the environment and this talks about land based environment and marine based environment and many times we focus only on the land based environment whereas the 70% of the earth surface is water is a marine and there is a lot of diversity there which we hardly see it and there is a interlinkage between land based environment and marine environment next slide please and now we have what is called as air pollution many people just read it in the paper and people feel that covid 19 has given us a mask that will also help in adapting to the air pollution yes maybe but look at this figure 7 million people every year in this world out of which nearly 2 million in india and almost equal in china they die due to the air pollution compare that with 2.7 or probably now 3 million that have died due to the covid 19 and it is not a every year figure 2 3 million will be a cumulative figure so the air pollution is severe and our farmers are also getting affected by that is not only the urban people next slide please now what this 7 million means it means four planes of a320 crashing every hour on this earth if one helicopter crashes if one plane crashes we have a headlines in newspaper so imagine four planes crashing every year every hour and that is the air pollution effect next slide please so the climate change curbing of it and preventing deaths from the air pollution and conserving biodiversity are the top most priority which are extremely and closely related to the agriculture and both this climate change and the biodiversity go hand in hand next slide please these are telling about the percentage and the top one which is not named 
is the agricultural sector's contribution. You can't see because the slide is small uh, or, the, or the pie chart is small, uh, big, uh, is about 10%. Next slide, please. We are talking about limiting the temperature rise to 2 degrees centigrade. That is what Paris Climate Agreement goal is. The actual goal is 1.5 degrees centigrade. That's what the small island countries insisted on. So the wording is also compromised. So the wording in Paris Climate Agreement is, we will limit the temperature to one uh, to two degrees centigrade while making earnest efforts to limit to 1.5 degrees. Next slide, please. Next. Next, please. Now, what this 1.5 degree centigrade means, if you go to farmer, and when I talk to my friend, farmer friends in Ramatpur, and I tell them about 1.5 degree centigrade rise by the end of this century, they say, what does it mean? And in Ramatpur, the temperature goes up and down every day or every hour. So what does that mean? So our communication to the farmers about the challenges they are facing also need to be changed. When the temperature of Earth rises by 1 degree centigrade, average temperature, is equivalent of dropping 400,000 Hiroshima-scale atom bombs every day on this Earth. That much heat we are adding due to our addiction of so-called development. And unless we say that, because you know Hiroshima bomb, only one which stopped World War II, that is still remembered by the humanity. <coughs> 400,000 Hiroshima scale bombs falling every day on the earth. And that much heat we are adding, which is not going anywhere. The whole ecosystem, our land, our trees, our crops, they are absorbing that heat. There is a limit. Our borders are getting bulged. Our ecological systems are getting overburdened. And we hardly remember it hardly recall it and hardly recognize it because the communication is not getting properly to the bottom of the pyramid. Next slide, please. Well, this is talks about a carbon budget. If at all you have to limit to two degrees centigrade, we just have left 900 gigatons of carbon dioxide to be emitted. So the agriculture sector's space will be probably 90 gigatons, if you take 10%. Many research are going on to say that it is not only carbon dioxide, it is also methane, it is also nitrous oxide, which agriculture is producing, and research is still going on. So now we have the budgets. Our parents give us a budget to the youth to spend 100 rupees per month, let's say. Now we segregate it. Take 10 of that for rent, 30 of that for food. So similarly, now till the end of this century, we have just about 900 gigaton of carbon dioxide emission to be done before we reach 2 degrees centigrade. And today's rate of emission is about 50 gigaton. You can find out how many hours are, how many years are left for finishing our budget. Then we will be bankrupt as far as carbon dioxide emission is concerned. Next slide, please. Well, this says that if we continue on a present path of our development, we will not be reaching 2 degrees centigrade rise, but 4.5. And what our countries have committed now to reduce the emission, we will reach 3.5. Whereas our aim in the Paris Climate Agreement is 2 degrees centigrade. So challenge is very high. And agricultural sector continues to contribute heavily for greenhouse gas emissions. So yes, we probably will improve our productivity, increase the food production, but at the same time, we'll also increase the greenhouse gases. Next slide, please. Next slide, please.
Well, this slide has no title. Probably there is a small title there. This challenge cannot be solved by writing a code. This challenge cannot be solved by writing an algorithm. This challenge cannot be solved purely by digitalization. I think we have to adapt those technologies to suit the farmers, the users who can easily use it for the purpose we want to do it. And that is a doubling the income. Next slide. Dr. Shandi, you know, the previous slide has disappeared. Can you show the previous slide, Mr. Manish? Mr. Manish? No, previous slide, not the next. Previous. No, okay. Now, this is a very important thing that, you know, this is you are talking about it, it suddenly disappeared. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I wanted to, uh, I probably, this slide repeats my arguments. Okay. 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 Good. Land Good. use, oceans, exploitation of species, and carbon addiction. Because we are addicted to the fossil fuel. Probably after this webinar, we will be going to the office in the car. So, yeah, we, we immediately start using the fossil fuel. So next slide, please. And then next to next. Yeah, so having given this speech, probably many of you must be thinking there is a typical United Nations speech telling, telling audience about the doomsday. So what we need to do? What is the action? Take the guns in a hand and shoot everybody? Plant the trees? Or use the mask, fashionable mask nowadays? or have some kind of innovation. And that is the topic. The topic is using the technology, education, research for a single focus action of innovation. I think innovation is what is lacking in agriculture. People think that by having a smart irrigation so that water goes to the plant only at specific time, and putting a timer over there is innovation. Yes, it may be innovation, but we require in agriculture a disruptive innovation. Example of disruptive innovation is that earlier there was a fixed line phone. So people never imagined that we will carry the phone in our pocket and go in a metro or bus and still keep on talking. It was beyond our imagination, but there was a disruption and those are kind of disruptions are required. Next, please. So what do we expect? A grant from developed country? Like Bill Gates keeps on meeting our prime minister and offers number of things or we go on a protest. I mean, we know Bill Gates on the left hand side and he's no longer a wife because they divorced. But on the right hand side, many of you won't know who is that. He's my IIT alumnus, Dr. J.D. Agarwal. He went on fast and sacrificed his life because our Ganges, our Ganga River is not getting purified. We only keep on talking about it. He sacrificed his life. Did Ganga get purified? We all know the answer. So we require a disruptive solution to get into the system. Next slide, please. So let me give you the example of one of the disruptive solution. And that is called as a smart campus cloud network. This network is not a usual network in the internet. It is not a usual network of students or the groups or WhatsApp group or something. It is a smart campus network, which uses a cloud technology. It uses IoT, and it also uses what is called as a big data analysis. Why we do that? In order to get adaptive innovation not a simple innovation. We don't want to carry certain innovation and win the prize and awards. 
we want this to be used at the ground level in order to make sure that the bottom of the pyramid improves its productivity. 2021 represents United Nations decade of action that has started. By 2030, it will end. And 2022, when we want to double the farmer's income, is only 15 days away. Maybe we'll probably say that end of 2022, we will increase the doubling the income. But I think we, are, we need to change the community which is working for doubling the farmer's income. Next slide, please. So this is what United Nations Secretary General, present one, Antonio Guterres has said, that we need to invest in future and not in the past. And that investment in future should go for innovation, the adaptive innovation, the people, humanity related innovation, biodiversity related innovation and climate change related innovation. Next slide, please. This is a very interesting slide which I want to show. And uh, Professor Moni, who, has, who was a Director General of National Informatics Center, and I'm so proud to be getting introduced by him, which is an honor, he would like this photograph. This is a photograph of 2013 of our beloved Prime Minister Modi. This photograph shows innovation you will hardly realize that there is innovation. But let me explain to you. This innovation is on campaigning for the election. You know that in 2014, he became prime minister. But 2013, he started the campaign in the university. He did not start by holding a mass public gathering on the banks of Yamuna or in Ram Lila Maidan or at the Red Fort, he said, tomorrow's future is youth. Let me address the youth first and then I start my campaign. So his first campaign meeting was in a Ferguson College in Pune. And that's the, what the picture is. So this was a disruptive innovation. Anyone who wants to get the power probably will start by going to someone who is going to give immediate vote. They won't rec recognize that the new vote comes from the youth and that need to be captured. Next slide, please. So smart campus cloud network is nothing but a network of university campus in which the youth work, their minds get molded, their talents get incubated and the policy makers of tomorrow get transformed and the positive computation is generated between the universities because of cloud. So the success of Shobit University in agriculture or in e-governance or the agroinformatics is transformed through the cloud, which has been developed by Ter Policy Center to the agricultural university in Maharashtra, Rahuri. And they get inspiration from Shobit University and start multiplying the successes because the time is an important factor. So smart campus cloud network is nothing but learning by doing because you work in the campus mainly for energy, water, food, and land. And at the same time, you accelerate whatever you are doing. And because you are dealing with the youth, they know the innovation spirit. Next slide, please. So it is a global network. It's not only Indian network. And I'm going to come to the status. How many universities are there? It is a skill building exercise for SDG. It makes youth SDG ready and climate neutrality ready. And when he comes out of the university campus, he then has a control of what the India should be in future. Next slide, please. These are 17 goals, probably all of you have seen it. Next slide, please.
So what SCCN does? This is a very interesting slide. It says, it asks the students to come out of the classroom and go to the campus and start working. You want to conserve the energy? Conserve it in a campus first so that it will remain in your back of your mind when you go for your professional career. It doesn't use black, it, blackboards are important, but also come out of the blackboard and start using keyboards for digital technology, for monitoring whatever you are doing in a campus and for implementing it. Come out of theory and learn by doing. Maybe some of the theories are wrong. Today, the whole economics, United Nations Environment Program thinks that whole economics is wrong. We need to follow the green economy because number of ecological values are not internalized in economics. Today's economics is archaic and we need to, this is what the green economy movement is. And don't believe in normal things. Believe in the next normal or even better than normal. And come out of the shell. Don't remain only in Shobit. There are 1000 universities in the, in the whole India, maybe more than that. And start sharing, grow by sharing and come out of the, your boundaries and to foster the local by vocal, by going global. And this is what Professor Moni mentioned in his introductory talk. Next slide, please. These are our partners. I think there is a slide probably comes later on because our main partners are UNESCO, AICTE, All India Council for Technical Higher Education, UGC, ASOCHAM, which is written here, and also two Chinese organizations. We all know China is our enemy. But Atal Bihari Bajpayee Saab has said that we can change our friends, but we cannot change our neighbor. And you cannot have a neighbor as an enemy forever. And remember that we have a common enemy, both India and China have a common enemy, and that is a climate change and biodiversity. We have to fight that together. And that's what Smart Campus Cloud Network does with the help of NGOs in China. Next slide, please. These are some of the kits and guidelines that we have produced, which will be helpful for uh, University of Shobit and any other university. Next, next slide, please. This is another guideline which is uh, made as a single-use plastic-free, which our Prime Minister has said that by 2022, whole India will be free from single-use plastic. And let us start with the university. We already started. The Ferguson College is the first one to become plastic-free. And that was inaugurated a couple of months back by the ambassador of Norway. And he specially flew to Pune appreciated the efforts of the university and said that he will take this experience back to Norway and say that how we can get inspired by India. Next slide, please. So what is, what is SCCN today? Where we have reached 400 plus universities registered, 12 are from abroad. Digital cloud dashboard is available. So the energy consumption in one university is known to the other one, provided you know the username and the password. IoT platforms are operational. Sustainability reports are being produced by universities. National awards are given for the clean and smart campus by AICT combined with their policy center. And the campus guidelines have been prepared and a carbon neutrality pledge, which Professor Moni mentioned that on a 2nd of December, Prime Minister Modi took the pledge that we will be carbon neutral by 2070. And we have developed a pledge which tells that each university will be carbon neutral. Take this pledge. And 250 universities have come forward to take that pledge. Next, next slide, please. Next slide, please.
So it is learning to be sustainable, performing to be efficient, and sharing to be prosperous. So smart campus is also piloting a smart city. And smart cities are piloting smart country and a smart future. Next slide, please. So campus becomes a laboratory. And these are the activities which the students carry out there. Next slide, please. So some of the projects which I'm going to show now, which are disruptive projects, are solar shadow harvesting, water harvesting, sustainable and climate resilient agriculture, solar and wind agri residue based energy production, carbon neutrality, net zero emission, carbon credits between the campuses and local products going global with their brand names. These are some of the things which are being tried by the smart campuses. Next, please. All the agricultural colleges in Maharashtra, the universities are part of the smart campus cloud network. Thanks to Ashok Methil, who was heading NABARD as a general manager, he was instrumental in taking these messages that youth is at the center and they can make the changes and they can make the changes fast is what is needed now. Next slide, please. Solar panels in CV Raman College of Engineering in Bhubaneswar used mainly for lighting as well as in a kitchen. Next slide, please. This is a solar initiatives in SRM University in Chennai. And you see the parabolic on the, on the right hand side are mainly used for cooking the rice in a canteen. And there are 8,000 students take everyday lunch in the canteen with the help of solar cooked rice. Next slide, please. This is that platform. If you know the password and the username, you can understand how much MIT University is producing renewable energy, how much emissions they are having. And I'm sure Shobit probably will have now the platform with the help of their policy center. Next slide, please. This is how the dashboard looks like. I won't go in detail because of the lack of time. Uh, Professor Moni, how much time I have still? I'm not able to hear you. You are muted. A lot of time, don't cut short. It is a okay. very important thing. Message has to go to where the all the participants and especially the youths. And uh, you know, time is not the limitation. You know, it's it's please carry on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So this is the example of a dashboard. It is a smart meter, and I don't think the youth nowadays get scared by the smart meter. Because they have everything smart on their body. Their watch is smart. The health indicators are smart. Their mobile phones are smart. Everything is smart. And a smart meter in a campus is now a commodity. It is not a high technology. You can buy smart meters from anywhere. And if you put that smart meter on your electricity cable, you get the data of energy consumption, which can be transformed into your emissions depending on how much percentage of renewable energy you are using, it transforms into how much money you are spending. And it also transforms into what exactly is energy efficiency. And if you are wasting any energy somewhere in auditorium where the lecture is over, but you forgot to switch off the air conditions. This is all shown on a dashboard. And don't get scared by the dashboard. That dashboard is on your mobile phone. And that exactly is UNESCO wants. What UNESCO wants is let that data be accessible to all. It should not be, data should not be what is called as a, a ownership of only Professor Moni, who was a director general of informatics. It should go to the farmer. It should go to the student. 
and it should go to the policy makers next slide please this is a air quality monitoring station in one of the university campuses in pune next slide please yes this is very interesting we all talk about pollution and we all look at what is called as a weather offices or how much is the pollution index i mean it is in delhi everywhere on our electronic boards but hardly any university campus has such boards the the students the students should know what is the air quality today and they should be able to phone the tropical meteorological offices saying that this is what is happening tell us what we need to do and this particular air quality index aqi is developed by the students in the university and put it in the national app which is called as suffer india next slide please now i start the disruption in agriculture few is small but few is also big in agriculture food energy and water next slide please now this may show this may look like a very ordinary picture by you that we have seen all these solar panels what is so great about it now watch carefully it has been on the corridor and below the corridor is the horticulture remember the sun is getting hot the summers are getting more and more sunny so if at all your productivity is to be maintained there has to be some shadow and that's what man started with when the humanity was searching for water that they had a agroforest the trees provided a shadow today when i in my two acre of farm whenever something is not growing the first remark is sir there is no sun because you have put so many trees but i keep on telling them that's how the humanity started then we started cutting the trees because we wanted more land for growing the food and today you will be surprised i was in sri lanka and their productivity of the tea tea leaves are going down and the re great research is done by sri lanka that in 10 by 10 feet 10 feet by 10 feet if you plant one tree in the tea garden the tea productivity increases so we come to know that we are going back to what our forefathers were doing maybe we don't have to have forest where the no sun comes but some sun is needed but not all the sun next slide please look at this innovation for difficult for you i have taken this photograph i have taken this photograph from south of france what is the innovation that all the area is not covered with solar panel and below is the crop is getting ready the seeds are sown and they require a sun so you use the solar panel for getting the energy but at the same time you leave some of the areas for the light to come in we never thought we we thought that all the roof should be covered by solar panel because we get maximum energy but if at all we are to want to use the solar panels as a shadow then we need to leave some of the glasses without solar panels so that the sun can come down and you can see that happening here next please <coughs> <coughs> okay the next one is this one in fact there are many solar panels and there is a gap in between do you see that and there is a horticulture there is a vegetable which is being grown and see the productivity of those vegetables so the solar panels produces energy it produces higher productive vegetables and next slide please <coughs>
<coughs> no, this is earlier. Next, please. Yes. No. No, the earlier one. Yeah. Well, this is on a dry land. And south of France, the rain there is very scarce. So what these people are doing is the solar panel gives the energy. It gives the shadow. It does give the water also. Next slide, please. Okay. Now here, all the solar panels have water collection at their edges. Whatever the water falls, I mean, I'm not talking about only rainwater. Even if there is no rainy season, the morning dew can be quite a large. And I have seen that there are a whole bunch of ponds which get filled by collecting the night dew from solar panel. So today we are talking about solar panel as a renewable energy. Solar panel is also renewable shadow. Solar panel also is a renewable water. And these kind of things, if at all our farmers start learning, probably they will be saving the money and the saving the money is also increasing the income. Next, next slide, please. And now we come to the animal husbandry. Now imagine I have four cows in my farm and I have 22 ducks and I have 15 hens along with the two dogs. Now when I send them out in the open, they don't have a tree to sit down. Now imagine that a farmer puts on these solar panels. These animals like to sit under the solar panel in order to rest. They don't have a place to rest and we don't want them to be in their stable, in their cow stable. And so imagine what are the kind of things that solar panel can do. So we have the, for example, I just want to tell you, carbon capture and storage People say that the big technology is getting developed. That whatever carbon dioxide we send, capture it and store it somewhere underground or make a chemicals out of it, etc. But carbon capture and storage is going on for millions of years on the earth. And the best example is a tree. The tree captures carbon dioxide and stores it and it gives you food. Nobody wants to talk about it. And people say that we are developing a huge technology to capture carbon dioxide and put it in the ground. I think disruptive technology is also disruptive behavior, disruptive thinking. And that's why we don't call ourselves Air Policy Center as a think tank. We just say, be a disruptive practitioner. That's it. Next, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah, it, it, it also says about uh, how the, I mean, why I say few for pleasure is because this is done in a wine yard in France, where, where I was stationed for nearly two decades. Uh, and, um, you know, the solar panels are being used to protect the white wine yards. So that's why it is called as a few for pleasure. Next slide, please. Yeah, this shows uh, some of the cattle feeds as well as mustard seeds, which are grown under the under the under productivity is very high, even if the land is a dry and degraded, as you can see from this photograph. Next slide, please. Same. You can see how the land is outside the panels and see how the growth in a shadow. Next slide, please. Yeah, I think this is a repetitive. Next slide, please. Yeah, so the youth, I think it has gone further. You have to go back. No, earlier, earlier, earlier. Yes, stop there. So the, I think 
Professor Moni talked about sustainable development goals. So the smart campus cloud network, whether it works on a solar project in a disruptive way, or whether it works on uh, collecting the water or conserving the energy, they are all linked in more than one SDG. For example, if somebody works on energy conservation, we say, oh, it is 7 and 13. But no, solar panel can also do animal husbandry. Solar panel can also grow the agriculture in a more productive way. And solar panel also can collect the water. So there are more, many more SDGs which are linked to it. Next slide, please. The latest project, and I feel the Shobit University should undertake this, and many universities should undertake this, and we are going to generate what is called as a competition among the universities, who becomes net zero first. Now, the universities don't like zero. No student likes zero in their subject. But the net zero is what we should race for. We should have competition. Who becomes net zero first? And I'm sure you, they don't have to wait till 2070, which our prime minister talks about. I think they can do much more early. And we, are, we will be with AICTE and UGC. We are going to start a national competition for the universities for not zero net zero. It will be announced in 2022. Next slide, please. Some of these projects, what can be undertaken in a university campus, particularly in an agricultural university campuses. Because the youth from you know, such campuses probably can guide the farmers or set up innovation to give, the, give it to the farmers for employing it or can make sure that the wastage is reduced. So when we talk about waste and composting, we are talking about utilizing the waste in a gainful way. That composting will save the money for the farmers. So these ideas about legalizing MSP, which is the great demand in the latest farmers protest, or putting the subsidy in the pockets of farmers, or talking about all other reforms, I think what is required is a reform in a way the agriculture is being done. And I think Professor Moni talked about storages, food chains, cold chains, post-harvesting wastage stoppage, etc., etc. And I think there one can do and one can utilize the digital technology to do it more effective. And they exist. And we should follow that up. The university ranking, which we have been discussing with the AICTE, their policy center, and we had a meeting just last week, that has been supported. That ranking has to be done, not based on how many students get employment within six months of graduation. It is not to be done by what is the ratio of professors to students? Well, somebody else can keep on doing it. But what is required today is a ranking by mainstreaming SDGs. How many universities and who is in a forefront for employing SDGs in their campuses? And that ranking will be soon announced. And I feel that the university will take it as a positive competition and make sure that their ranking comes up. Next slide, please. Many people think that carbon neutrality is a complex. So they say that carbon neutral is a cloud. How can you do carbon neutral? It's impossible to do. It is an extremely simple process. Start with behavioral change, conserve the energy, improve the efficiency, use renewable energy, and whatever you cannot stop because something is not available, plant the trees, create a carbon capture, carbon sink. And I think this is one of the most easiest thing to do. The world is not doing it, mainly because the fossil fuel all over the world 
is subsidized and a fossil fuel subsidy given to the industry has become a powerful lobby so nobody wants to touch it india was the first one to put a carbon tax it is not called as a carbon tax but on the coal there is a 100 rupees levy per ton which is being put over there and prime minister modi in a very subtle way employing these methods for carbon tax and trying to reduce the use of fossil fuel which many people don't understand it well next slide please and uh, i forgot to tell that country like france and other countries in europe tried to put a carbon tax and all these european countries and uh, usa and western countries give a big talk on a carbon <coughs> tax give a big talk on people not taking action and the leaders are uh, have inertia for taking and it's only talk 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 and no walk 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 same people refuse to accept carbon tax and that's what prime minister modi keeps on saying that indian knowledge system and the lifestyle is totally different when we put tax on coal and when we put a tax on petrol i think our people understand it they understand it well president macron of uh, france has to take back the carbon tax otherwise his government was in danger and the same president macron comes in cop 26 and gives a big lecture to the world saying that we should have a carbon tax he himself is not able to do that and this is a dilemma and we our final message is don't think time for thinking is gone there is no policy think tank tanks are empty water has drained out just do it take out the water fill it your tank and that is your think tank so go ahead register with sccnhub.com take a pledge on not zero net zero which is called nznz come to us we will help you to walk the talk talk to us and achieve the carbon neutrality next slide please that's the message so don't make yeah. we have to transform and that can be done by pulling the weaker section up on the hill you have to go to the summit but you going on a summit doesn't help ensing and she, uh, edmund hillary went together on a in a everest each one helped other and still many people don't know who came first on everest but that is not a point the point is everest was conquered our point is climate change and biodiversity crisis need to be conquered by no one left behind professor moni thank you very much that's the end of my presentation <laughs> thank you thank you thank you and our honorable chancellor has joined I welcome our honorable chancellor we had a very pleasant talk by the man who wrote the report for IPCC 2007 which got the nobel prize in 2007 dr rajendra madhav rao shinde he talked for more than 1 hour very important topic on the terrace policy center that technology education research rehabilitation for the environment and i also said it that you know what you know, you know we need a lot of innovation in agriculture sector during this difficult period and uh, how this carbon sequestration can take in place carbon storage can take place to convert as a food for human being and uh, he gave an example of how solar can become a few that is a food energy and water you know this is how he found an acronym few in this uh, lecture 
and is very innovative. He is also was instrumental in having this uh, SCCN network, and uh, which the you know the many universities are joining. And he's also suggested a lot of projects which can be undertaken in the in the process. And uh, you know, I, and uh, I also informed the you know Dr. Shente that the mission. Uh, of the Soviet Institute of Engineering and Technology and the Honorable Chancellor that in making agricultural informatics is a core research program in the university. And he was instrumental way back in 2009. The university was set up in 2007. But in 2009, they have taken a uh, you know, decision to have agricultural informatics is a core component or to be undertaken. That's how the five centers of excellence which he, that the university has established in with respect to rural economy. With, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, I'm very happy to welcome our honorable chancellor and also would like to, you know, you know, you know, introduce our honorable chancellor to the August gathering and also to the guest speaker. Shri Kanwar Shekhar Vijayantara is the co-founder and chancellor of the Soviet Institute of Engineering and Technology, Meerut a NAC accredited deemed to be university and Soviet University, Ganga, Uttar Pradesh. He is a prominent social entrepreneur based in New Delhi and carries leadership role in many organizations. He has been nominated as a co-chairman of National Council on Education of Asochap for the year 2020-21 and 21-22. He is also president of Center for Education, Growth and Research, a leading and only education think tank in India and New Delhi. Shri Kanwar Shekhar Vijendra is a persistent advocate of the initiatives for education for all, secular values, crisis management through diplomatic and peaceful ways, and globalized system of learning, and harmonious coexistence. He has been instrumental in the development of a number of higher education institutes in North India, including two universities, many research centers, and Ayurveda Medical College, College of Naturopathy, and Yogic Sciences, and a 100-bed OIS hospital. Shri Kanwar Shekhar Vijendra is instrumental in establishing five centers of excellence, Center for Agriculture Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies, Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, Center for Informatics Development Solutions and Application, Center for Industry 4.0 Technology Studies and Application, and Center for Health Informatics and Computing in the university to promote informatics and technology-led development in rural India. Shri Kanwar Shekhar Vijendra is very actively involved with a number of social organizations Acknowledging his contribution in the areas of education and other concern, he has been copiously honored and awarded. Shri Kanwar Shekhar Vijendra has traveled widely in India and abroad to the countries like USA, UK, Germany, Australia, Russia, China, South Korea, Vietnam, Mongolia, United Arab Emirates, Mauritius, Rwanda, Uganda, and Croatia, etc., to participate in various professional, social, and educational activities. Shri Kanwar Shekhar Vijendra is a passionate Gandhian. I would reader, keen learner, social speaker, occasional poet, and a dreamer. We welcome our Honorable Chancellor to this uh, national webinar series and doubling farmers income by 2022. And also to give valedictory address in this national webinar and also to have some interaction with the, our Honorable Speaker, Dr. Rajendra Madhav Rao Shetty. Over to our Honorable Chancellor. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you, Professor Muni. I was listening to Dr. Rajendra Madhav Rao Shinde behind the screen. And it was such a interesting, deliberated, and very simple presentation, which everybody can understand and must have understood. Thank you very much, Dr. Shinde, for a wonderful presentation. You are heading a policy center, which is, itself is called Earth in French, theory. And the abbreviation technology, education, research, rehabilitation for the environment. This is what actually we all have to talk. This is what actually we all have to understand the importance and we have to integrate them together in very simple ways. When you mentioned that you do not like to be called a think tank, or disruptive agents. So suddenly it reminded me of Brahma Vishnu Mahesh. Mm -hmm. Brahma is creator. 
Vishnu is integrator and Mahesh is disruptor. And after every disruption, a new creation starts. So we have never heard about Gana's gun of uh, Vishnu or Brahma. Mahesh ke bhat sare gun hote hai. Where is Shiv ke gun hai? And I think that those Gana's of Shiv, of Mahesh, the agents of disruption, they are actually behind every new creation. And this is what actually you are doing. Wonderful job you are doing. And most importantly, when you talk about technology, technology does not mean only when you were giving an example of solar plates and you were showing some of the slides. I was really happy to see that in spite of the fact we have technology, but how to use it. Artificial intelligence will not tell us. Human intelligence will tell us. That if uh, I leave five uh, plates, then suddenly sun also becomes uh, uh, an agent to grow more food, not only energy. If I collect water through them, then suddenly something more is coming to me. So technology has to be generally what is happening, that uh, what we all are doing, that we are talking about technology nowadays too much. Even SDGs, when you were telling even the AI city, you are trying to do something and you have will be a competition you are planning. A few days back, I believe three days back, the chairman AI city was with us in one of the national uh, conference, which was organized by Shubit University to celebrate 54 of these webinars. Because we had uh, 54 webinars of the same series and 54 webinars of Atam Nirbhabharat. So 108, when the mala was complete with 108 motis, we decided to celebrate it. And uh, Professor Sahasra Buddha was one of the guest speaker with us. So we spent a lot of time and we had a detailed discussion on the same. But when I look at SDGs, when I look at innovations, when we, I look at capturing CO2, what you were mentioning, generally we forget to apply our ancient knowledge. Mm -hmm. We do not talk about it. Yes, yes. We feel somebody else will come, some new innovation will be there, some new research will be there. And we do not uh, remember or we forget that we are doing the research. <laughs> and every research had, a search had been there already, just we have to go back. And your talk today was reminding me of all those things. When you were talking about education, education is not just to take degrees. Education is not just to have something that, okay, I have achieved this thing. I always say the most educated person is the man who share his success for the progress of the society. Very good. We all are very successful people indeed. But if my success, your success is putting an impact for the progress of the society or not, then I am educated or I am not. The same way research is there. Today, everybody is talking about a lot of impact factor in my research papers is there or not. Mm -hmm. But at Shobit University, we believe that if your research is having a social impact or not, that is more important to us than your impact factor of your research paper. And this I was reflecting from your talk today. Rehabilitation of what we are talking about. Actually, for me, we have to rehabilitate ourselves. It is not somebody, somebody will come, some refugee is there, some migrant is there. Because we have displaced ourselves from the earth, the beautiful earth, we do not deserve actually. And maybe for that purpose, this complete webinar series is there where we are talking about creating knowledge. Every webinar create new knowledge nowadays. Then we wish to disseminate that knowledge. Then we wish to apply that knowledge, application, utilization of that knowledge we try to do. Environment is for all of us, as you mentioned many times during your talk. And the most important thing that no one is left behind, we have to see. This had been always our Indian culture and Sabhyata. Yes, yes. Right from ancient time, we were always talking about Sarve Bhavantu Sukhannam. 
we were yes. never talking about I, we were talking about we. And this is exactly what is required. Uh, Honorable Prime Minister, you mentioned 2070 is talking about net zero emission, uh, mission what he has talked. But at the same time, he has talked about a one Pancham Ratta also. Mm -hmm. He mentioned five important things that fulfillment of 50% of energy he is talking about, but more we can do. Yeah. And it does not need much. It needs intent. At Shubit University in 2010, we started using solar energy in very effective manner. I think we were among the very few universities who was having 100 kvp plant that time on our roofs in the campus. Uses of non-fossil energy capacity has to be increased, bringing down carbon density, reduction of net projected carbon emission and achieve net zero by 2070, which definitely can be changed to 2027. In coming five, six years, we can do that. If people like you not only write policy papers, but they come and visit the universities and motivate youth. You know, generally what is happening, our policy papers, our discussions, our deliberations, they reach to limited people around. They reach to those, those who are interested to learn new things. But we do not need more learners. We need more executors. Very good. I always say the vision has been given by the leaders. Now you and me have to make it a mission and then execution part will start by the masses. So through this uh, webinar, I'm taking an opportunity to invite you to be a part of Shobit University in whatever capacity you feel. And let us disseminate the knowledge. Let us discuss the experiences you have earned throughout your life in France, in India, wherever it had been, in the United Nations. And let us work with the young generation. We are the youngest country. But these young boys and girls, they need a hand-holding, especially when we talk that now we have to think from I to V. Mm -hmm. We have to make them understand this thing. And that thing can be done by people like you, those who have seen the world, who have achieved a lot of things in the world, and those who have done more research than research. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much. It was indeed a pleasure to listen to you. And I am sure that your presentation of the day, it will reach to the masses through all those social media platforms where it is live or where it will be recorded and will be available in future also. And uh, whenever you are in Delhi, please do spare some time. Let us have a cup of tea together. Sure. Discuss what we can do. And with your policy center, if university can develop something, maybe a chair of environment we, we can think of. And I will be happy to explore all those possibilities with you. And thank you, Professor Moni, to bring one more gem in our journey of creating new knowledge and disseminating the experiences of wonderful people like Dr. Shinde. Thank you very much. So, thank you, Chancellor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Chancellor, <coughs> and your decision to establish a um, center of, uh, you know, center of, uh, you know, excellence in the directions of uh, what uh, Professor Rajendra Shinde has talked about it, and his, your invitation to Dr. Rajendra Shante to visit and also join in whatever capacity which he feels that it is uh, more, uh, you know, meaningful for taking his mission uh, through the university to the society. And, uh, you know, it is, uh, you know, is well, uh, well taken. And uh, it goes with your, uh, you know, uh, understanding and appreciating, uh, appreciation, which you have been demonstrating both in the university as well as also in various webinar series which are being conducted uh, during the last one year in the very difficult situation. And uh, today's talk by Dr. Rajendra Shante is very important. And as you rightly said, told by the Honorable Chancellor in simple language, 
you know the presentation conveyed his talk conveyed a lot of messages and uh, you know we'll be very happy if uh, dr rajinder shante you know visit our university join with us to spread the knowledge uh, to the whole community he also said it that our impact factor is the social impact factor and mm-hmm. dr rajendra you know uh, our uh, dr rajendra shente he talked that he had given a proposal to the all in the council of technical education that the ranking of the university has to be done based on various other parameters not on the parameters which are being taken now being considered now and the one parameter which you can also add it is the social impact factor very good that is also very important along with other factors which you talked about it and uh, you know and uh, i am very happy as a pro, you know as a former technocrat who has worked for e governance from the bottom up process i chose to you know after my retirement to i chose to come to the university an university which is located in rural areas and would like to do a lot of you know uh, uh, you know research in the area of agriculture through digital technology i am a very satisfied person after working with the university since 2010 is almost 11 years 3 years when i was in service and after 8 years after my retirement and this is university can do lot of changes he also said it very clearly why to look for 2070 let it put it as a 2027 and that shows that shows that you know his is young is youth in the nature in him and the way to look for 2070 why not 2027 and with this spirit we would like to work with you dr rajendra shante you worked in a lot of international organization you spent more than 3 decades you know working with the environment you know and uh, related aspect we would like to get benefit out of your vast experience our students in this part of india part of this country should get benefit out of it and we have set up center of excellence which none of the universities in the world have established so far you talked about innovations in agriculture has to take place agricultural informatics is the first discipline which the university decided to have it way back in 2010 and a center of excellence in the area of center for agricultural informatics e governance research and also on e governance research center for informatics development solutions so you know mm-hmm. and uh, you know applications we have not put the word informatics research we say that informatics development solutions and applications the country needs solutions and applications this is very important and also the three areas we are looking into it agriculture you know health and smes very important for rural economy as rightly said if we adopt a technology in rural management we can add 1.33 trillion dollars to the india's gdp why not you know that's where the social in the, in the soviet institute of engineering in technology deemed to be university merit is you know working towards marching ahead with respect to this component we welcome dr rajendra shetty to join with us to march ahead in uh, you know to propagate what he is doing for the last 30 years and his contribution has got nobel prize in 2007 thank you very much and i uh, I, i would like to request to dr rajendra shinte would like to you know give your you know remarks after listening to the valedictory address of the honorable chancellor dr rajendra shinte thank you thank you professor moni i was really humbled by the remarks of honorable chancellor i mean i i thought he is going to come on the last moment but he almost captured right from beginning the messages and you know there is no other pleasure which is greater than the audience understood what you delivered and uh, i i'm pleased he he said that it is not only he he understood it but the language which i used probably the audience understood it and for the speaker there is no other pleasure than this in united nation we are taught that communication is not what is delivered communication is also not what is understood but communication is about what actionable messages are given to the audience and how do they act based on that 
that is the communication and i think that example was given by chancellor and he exemplified it by saying that look the time has gone we did nothing probably we did something but it is not in the right direction and now we have to change the direction and there is a limited time and universities are the best conduit for that transformation and i am happy that uh, the young mind like chancellor is leading the other youth which is the youngest country in the world that youth is being led by the chancellor i have no hesitation in joining hands with you at all because i have a strong belief right from beginning that youth are the one who are going to transform not the policy makers in parliament which which has a problem even in scheduling and working in the parliament so i think it is a you youth who are ready to come on a street and come in the campus and start working i think that is what is needed and that is what will make the contribution to our prime minister's dream of making india atmanirbhar and i think we should be proud contributor to that we, we i think dr abdul kalam said dream is not what you get in the sleep dream is what doesn't allow you to sleep and i think chancellor put forward that very well that we have no time to lose we have to just get going chancellor we thank you very much for your message i got it in a short time so i learned from this webinar thank you thank you very much indeed it's a pleasure and we will explore the possibility to work together very soon yeah yeah thank you thank yeah. you my regards thank you namaskar 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 thank you very much to both honorable chancellor for his valedictory address and also dr rajendra sente who is the guest speaker of today's webinar series and we learned a lot we gained a lot and uh, you know and uh, it is very important you know research document research you know title for the youths you know startups and ngos to undertake and uh, i was also quite impressed from the wikipedia which his biodata was put i took that biodata and uh, introduced to the audience that he wanted to he is working on his village as a smart village as a model village and uh, you know you know operationalizing all the sdg goals and what else it is that you are trying to show that you worked with the united nation now we are saying that whatever you are worked for in through united nation you would like to show through your own village you know uh, rahmatpur in in uh, you know in um, you know in uh, mahatma yes uh, thank you satara district i'm very happy that uh, it is a smart village is very important and that's how the university was the part and parcel of the doubling farmers income committee report during formulation of its various policies and the seven mission mode programs which we recommended you know and also accepted and is available in the document of the doubling farmers income committee report that achieving a, you know smart village and smart farming is one of the seven mission mode goal thank you very much for joining today and uh, and you enjoyed it and uh, i also thank mr manish chabra for facilitating this event and also helping you to display your powerpoint presentation without any problem thank you very much and uh, and this is how and the message with your uh, you know logo with sccn and terry has now on live telecast through our university platform and uh, thank you very much for joining today for your wonderful talk and uh, this talk will be available in the university's website uh, as well as also in the youtube thank, thank you very you. much with this i would like to close the webinar and leave the studio thank you very much thank thanks you for your much. participation and greeting from sobit university so at sobit institute of engineering technology dim to be university and sobit university gango for more research inquiries please contact professor mori maraswamy professor emeritus and chairman center for agricultural informatics and uh, <coughs> e governance research 
and Center for Agricultural, Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies and former Director General National Informatic Center Government of India, New Delhi. My email ID is moni at sobitinversity.ac.in. Thank you very much and have a nice day.